So a boutique brand inspires, keyword inspires, both clients and prospects to go from the problematic status quo. So you have to be able to describe that problematic status quo to the opportunity filled future. So that's the before and after. And they get to this opportunity filled future by solving their biggest problem by buying your solution. That's really what you're after when you're thinking about creating a brand. Okay, so I created a little tool for us to use today. And I'm gonna, you know me, I love my 10 question yes, no checklist. So I created a new one just for that. So we're gonna present that on the screen and as a, a way to instruct on this subject, I'm gonna walk you through these 10 questions, why they're the important ones and how to use this. Okay, so the title of this tool is the Boutique ProServe Brand Building Checklist. And the first question is, can you describe your ideal client's problem in simple terms using their words? Yes or no? Now, I would tell you, knowing a lot of you, this question is going to be answered no a lot. And it's going to be answered no because you're using your words. You're not using their words. And sometimes we speak in industry jargon and it confuses our clients and our prospects. Question number two, can you articulate the drivers that are causing this problem and how those are getting worse, how the problem is getting worse every day, week, month, or year. It's not enough just to establish that there's a problem. You have to, in brand building, you have to explain what's causing the problem, the driver of the problem. Okay, number three, can you describe how this problem is frustrating your clients and, pro and prospects? I chose the word frustrating very deliberately because brands have to be based on emotion to get people to act. It's got to be very frustrating. And you have to be able to articulate to the client why this problem is frustrating them. Number four, can you articulate the client or prospect's status quo? Can I describe the before? So you're not using my solution today, and this is what your world looks like. Sometimes we skip the beat on that. The first thing you got to do is accurately describe the status quo. Okay, number five, in an ideal setting, can you tell a client or prospect how they can go from the problematic status quo to an opportunity uh, filled future that you create? So if I was on a whiteboard with you right now, I would draw a circle on the left and a circle on the right. Circle on the left would be labeled before, and the circle on the white would be labeled after. And in between those two points, I would draw a giant squiggly line all over the place, meant to illustrate how confusing it can be going from before to after. Then I would erase that and redraw this diagram with a very clear line from before and after. And I would show my client that by implementing my solution, embracing my brand, there's clarity on how to go from my problematic status quo to my wonderful future state, okay? Number six, can you quantify in dollars the cost of continuing with the status quo, doing nothing? If you can't do that, you don't have a compelling brand. Most of the time, what you're selling to your client is getting them to move off of the status quo and to take action. So you have to compel them to do that. Number seven, do you understand and can you articulate to the client or prospect the options they have to fix the problem? So for example, that could be an option of not doing anything. That could be an option of trying to fix the problem in-house. They don't know what good looks like. And your job as a brand builder and a brand activator is to show the client what their options are so that they feel like they're going to make an intelligent decision. And just by laying out the options will accelerate your sales campaigns quite a bit. Now, number eight, can you explain to the client and prospect how each of these options fails to solve the problem? This is when you get an opportunity to show you're better than the alternatives, better than the competition. So imagine a scenario that in your brand messaging, the client says, here's my problem. It's getting worse by the day. It's costing me a ton not to solve it. You know, here are the five things that I could possibly do 
and I'm ruling out one through four because it won't solve my problem. And number five is you. That's the dream state of what great brand messaging is all about. Number nine, can you explain to the client or prospect how your solution does solve the problem? You got to go further and say, oh, by the way, I actually can solve your problem because here's how I'm different, right? And as you can see, so often we want to go right to our differentiation. Next is number 10. Can you, in simple client prospect language, describe your solution and the benefit of using it? Now, if you've got to dive into a very long, complicated explanation of what your solution is, then you don't have a very effective brand.